This is raw clay dug from the ground. Uh, you can see it's filled with rocks, organic material, things like that. Um, some sand. Pretty rough. Um, we'll then take this, slink it down into to water or dry it out and sieve it uh, to get all the impurities out like the rocks and organics and we'll get a fairly fine dust. Add water to that and then you get a pretty malleable clay. And then typically you can mix it with temper of some sort, uh, like sawdust, sand, chafe, etc. with the clay. And that opens up the body, uh, allowing the body to, uh, to take heat shock a little bit better during the firing process and gives a little bit more structural strength too. So in this case we use sawdust for temper and the ancient Egyptians would have used what? Chaff. Chaff or, or straw. So straw. chaff is uh, chaff's what's left over after you thresh wheat, right? Yep. Okay. And then through the firing process, you'll see that the clay changes color. Uh, the color of the raw clay can depend on organic material, but also other impurities, typically iron oxide. Uh, this clay has a little bit of iron oxide in it, uh, so it gives it a little red tone to it when it fires. Um, this is fired to about 900 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is a little bit hotter, about 950, 1000. You can see it lightens up. And then when you get up to about 1100, uh, it starts to melt, actually. The tools are, are pretty interesting. Of course, the most important tool that really hasn't changed all that much is the, the artist hands. Um, it's the, the most basic tool, the most readily available. Um, but there's our, uh, other tools that assist in uh, construction. A lot of them are, are wood tools uh, that can be quickly made uh, with scrap pieces of wood, small pieces of wood, and these can be used for uh, cutting, shaping uh, the clay. We also have some rib tools, uh, which are just more slab pieces of wood, and these would be for scraping, uh, shaping the clay, uh, creating angles. And then there's also Later on, you would have some paddle and anvil type tools. Uh, these would be used to, to shape typically larger pieces. Uh, you would slap the clay walls and that would compress the clay, allow it to expand and, and uh, form a shape out of it. Um, sponges, rope to cut clay. Um, those tools are still used primarily today. Other tools that we use typically for low fire burnishing and polishing of the ware, uh, smooth metal tools for burnishing, uh, and then probably the, the best polisher there is right now is real thin, cheap plastic. Uh, taking this on a, a clay body and, and just rubbing it creates a really high intense polish. Uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, the Egyptians would have probably used uh, either a fine leather chamois, their skin, a leaf, uh, something smooth and, and um, pretty non-absorbent non uh, to do that. As far as finishing, there's also um, rocks for burnishing that would be used. Um, here's the, a piece of leather uh, that can be used. And then painting the wear uh, brushes, uh, natural hair brushes are pretty good. Uh, they hold a lot of uh, material and they create a pretty good sharp line with them. And these could be either human hair, goat hair, or other animal hair uh, that's fairly coarse.